Hey, what's up all you beautiful people? Welcome to a set of tutorials on one of my portfolio projects, Palm and Coffee. I'm going to show you how to build this full project from base modeling, UV mapping, texturing, lighting, rendering, and finally some Photoshop compositing. This is going to be a set of videos breaking down key elements in this project, starting with 3D modeling inside of 3ds Max. So follow along as you learn how to create a high poly model of a coffee can. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more design tutorials. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so we're inside of Photoshop and what I'm creating is called a reference image plane. This image plane consists of different pictures or views of the coffee can. It's used to help me model out the dimensions, the details, and serves as a visual checklist when I'm modeling things out. So for this example, I don't have to keep referencing different images for the negative extrusions, or the tab shapes for that matter. Everything is on one image. So next, we're going to go to File, Save As, save this out as a JPEG, and this is going to go into my diffuse slot inside of Max. I built out a 3D plane now, and notice how I'm matching the same document size as my Photoshop document. So both of these are 1259 by 1080. I'm going to apply my texture, simple shader, and I'm going to start the 3D right now. So starting off with a cylinder, that's going to be my base mesh. I turned the opacity down to about 20% so I can see what's behind it. And this is the whole reason why I use a 3D image plane, right? That's your reference. You want to match the size, the dimensions, the contours. You don't want to go too crazy right now on segments, especially when you're starting out. So for me, I tend to use 30 segments as a minimum so I can split it in half and work on one side if I need to. So here I'm going to clean up the model and add segments only where they need to be. So wherever my model changes in shape, I want to match that by adding segments and manipulating the curvature of my model. So again, referencing my image plane and following the shape of it. Okay, so one tip for you guys is whenever you're modeling something realistic, you want to use images that are um, you know, sized correctly and you're modeling something that's already been built, so real life assets. Right? So here I'm modifying the bottom of my coffee can and I don't want to totally steal what's on the reference images. It's just used as a reference point for me and I manipulate my shape all on its own so it's absolutely unique and it's not totally stolen. Okay, the base model is complete. The silhouette looks pretty good. I'm going to clone it and use a reference point. So whatever I add to one, it goes to the other. I'm working on the top portion now, and this is another perfect example of that reference plane, right? At this perspective, I can see how much I need to go inside of the bottle to create that inner lid. Fixing up my edges and modifying my edge points so that it bevels nice and smooth. You don't want to go too crazy on your chamfer points as well because don't forget you're going to add a turbo smooth after. So working on that top lid portion and adding my edge loop so it keeps it nice and crisp once I add my turbo smooth. Same thing for the bottom of the base and I'm going to add turbo smooth and there it is nice and clean. I'm happy with my model and we're going to be working on the top portion of the lid now. Okay, so this is a good opportunity for me to show you guys how the symmetry modifier works. Okay, so essentially, I scale my model to the perfect size so everything's nice and proportioned. I'm selecting all of these vertices and I'm connecting them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this model exactly in half. Okay, so selecting all of the components, the, uh, the polygons, the edges, and the vertices on the left side, and then deleting them. And what this does is it allows me to work on one portion only, and it splits up my working time, right? So I work on one side, and any kind of attributes, manipulations, or any kind of changes I do towards the right side 
automatically gets applied to the left side. So that's the power of using symmetry and using a mirrored workflow, okay? So you can only use this when your model is perfectly symmetrical, as in this example. So there it is, everything is selected. All of the modifications that I did on the right side are automatically applied to the left side. Okay, so with my polygon selected, I bevel inwards and I'm making an inset for those selected polygons and I'm cleaning up my edges a little bit. And I'm doing that to make a nice clean edge flow for my turbo smooth. In this view, with my polygon selected, I'm gonna be doing another round of insets and bevels. And this is when I wanna create that indentation on top of the lid. Okay, so all these tiny little details help cells your final model, especially when you have your turbo smooth and you have your textures all in place. One more selection, one more detail in my bevels before we move on. There you go. I'm gonna start next with the opening of the uh, tin can. I'm going to start with a rectangular spline and I'm going to use that same symmetrical method. So I convert it into an editable spline, add my middle points, and I'm going to delete the left portion. Then I'm going to go to refine my edges and I'm going to add some vertices to follow the contours of that opening. The pipeline is once I select the model, I refine my points, add any vertices that are needed, use the fillet command and the bezier tool, and that gives me the proper curvature to follow it. And then just like what's shown, I flip it over onto its mirrored axis, attach it, and then weld it. So it becomes one piece again. Same thing for this little guy inside. So manipulating the edges, adding my vertex on those necessary curvature points, using the fillet command, and uh, using the Bezier curves to get the proper alignments for those shapes. So once I finish this guy, I'm gonna break it in half and I split it over and I mirror it onto its following X axis. Nice and clean, taking my time. And I'm gonna combine these two shapes together to create one complete unified shape with a hole inside of it. These are those two selected shapes, and I'm going to duplicate it, so just in case I mess up, I have another copy, my original set. With the original shape, I'm going to click and attach that inner hole, and I'm going to apply an extrude modifier to it. So you'll notice that um, I've applied both, and that inner portion has now become the hole. Then we're going to start working on the actual tab itself, okay? This is again following that same symmetry method. I start out with a rectangular spline, manipulate those edges, and then I'm gonna select all of my vertex points, and then I'm gonna use the fillet command to round them out, okay? There it is. Once you use your fillet command, you gotta remember that there are some overlapping vertices on top of each other, so I have to weld those guys as well. I'm gonna work on that inner portion of the tab and create that same hole, that same method splitting up the model. And basically whatever uh, radius that I like for the right side, I'm gonna delete the left uh, portion and use my symmetry modifier and mirror it over and then weld those points to create that perfect shape. Okay, next is that little guy. So just for this model, there's all these little details that I got to add and sometimes it's a little bit time consuming but in the end it's worth it because that's how you sell the realism in your model. You have to hit all those little details because you're creating something from scratch and once you start slacking on those little portions the model looks incomplete. But with the help of the symmetry method and the symmetry pipeline essentially you're only working on one side and everything that you do on this portion, once you mirror it over, all of your modifications go to the exact opposite. So it saves you time. All three elements are separated 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine two of these pieces together and with this selected guy, the blue one, I'm going to extrude him and I'm going to use him as a compound boolean tool to make a hole for the actual tab piece. You're going to see here in just a bit, I've combined these two uh, pieces which are now pink. There it is and I'm going to use this blue shape using a compound boolean operator to make a hole on this pink object. With that one selected, I'm making a copy just in case it doesn't work out, and I'm saving it. I selected the uh, metal portion here, which is pink. I'm going to go to Compound Objects, Pro Boolean, and I'm going to select it. And using that method creates a hole in my object. Okay, so next portion is I'm going to work on the uh, let's call it the sippy the sippy cup opening. Okay, blue so with the uh, blue sippy cup portion selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my edges a little bit and this will allow me to use a nice crisp turbo smooth if I want to. Okay, So cleaning up my edges here, again making sure that your vertices and edge loops are nice and clean. Okay, Take the extra time to do that because once you apply your turbo smooth on it, um, if there's any in incomplete or intersecting uh, elements, you're going to see it. It's very visible, so it's going to create those weird artifacts. Here we are with the tab. I'm going to give it that same treatment as the blue sippy cup. I'm going to select the edges that I don't need, and I'm going to refine some of the final edges here. So with those edges selected, I'm going to chamfer I'm not going to go too much into it, just to add those little beveled details. Everything's going to look good once I add some shiny materials to it. Awesome! So, I hope you enjoyed the 3D portion of this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. Some key points, don't forget to use that reference plane for getting the perfect dimensions and detail pieces. If you're new to the channel and want to see more design tutorials, then definitely hit that subscribe and bell button so you stay up to date on more design videos. Thanks for watching, and may the universe smile upon you.